Let me explain something. It's not an issue of Wahhabi, non-Wahhabi, what, what people have been here for years on end. It's an issue of intolerance. It's an issue of extremism on all parties. I believe every Ustaz makes mistakes without exception. Take the good from all of them and leave the bad. When someone preaches hatred against another, discount it. And if you have the opportunity, go to them and tell them, please don't talk about other people. I want to ask you a question and I'm going to stand for this. You know who I am, right? I'm a brother of yours in faith. Have you ever heard me talk bad about another person? Mashallah. <laughs> Mashallah. The innocent have borne witness. Do you agree? Why? I have so much of goodness to share with the world that I don't have time to worry about others. Come on, come on, come on. Those who talk about others don't have something to present themselves. I'm busy doing my work. So many people send me messages. Oh, someone called you a Wahhabi. Someone called you a Sufi. Someone said you're a Salafi. Someone said you're a Deobandi. Someone said you're a Baralvi. Some of these names, I don't even know what they mean, to be honest with you. I was waiting for the day they said someone called you a chocolate man because that's more that's true you know but all these names for me I say hey, look I know what I am I'm a Muslim and I'm trying to spread a good message amongst all groups let me carry on doing my work the minute I turn to fight them I become a fighter I cause a bigger problem and now who's going to do this good work because my energy like I said earlier all the energies are now being utilized waste of resources to do something where it's going to be less beneficial in fact destructive so please do yourself a favor when you hear labeling you need to be more intelligent than the label you need to rise above it and tell yourself whatever good is coming from this person I will take it whatever bad is coming I will discount it the reason is even if you belong to one group it does not mean the ustazes of your group, everything they say is right. They will also say wrong things. You will have to pick it up. And it doesn't mean that there is a Christian across the road so they cannot teach you something good. I have had people who taught me mathematics and geography and biology and sociology and English language who were Jews and Christians and Hindus and people who belong to other faiths. I took from them whatever I had to and I left whatever I didn't. You follow what I'm saying? So when you go to the university, you will have a lecturer who might be gay, for example. You know, I'm not talking about this nation in particular, but maybe in Europe, okay? You take from them whatever you feel you need to take from them and leave the rest. I'm there to study petroleum engineering, for example, or whatever else. I took whatever I had to and that's it. And I respect them for having given me what they did. That's humanity. The problem with us is the problem is all over. We all are guilty of labeling others. This one is this. Let's, let's understand. It's qualities that make us or break us. You have a bad quality. Look, I'm sitting with people. I don't need to know what inclination he is or I am. I know I get along on common factors that are 9,999 compared to the one item that I might, I might find that I'm different with him in. Do you know? So this is why I say, let's not allow our nation to crumble based on this labeling that's going on. Take the good from everyone and leave that which is not good, no matter where it's from. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. May Allah bless your nation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you strength and growth. And may whatever issues you may be having be resolved in the best possible way that results in the true growth of your beautiful nation. Questioner and Sheikh replying. Sheikh asked, what are you? The questioner said, I'm a Muslim. So Sheikh Nasir al-Bani replies, what type of Muslim are you? Are you a Khariji? Are you a Mutazali? Are you a Shiai? Are you a Rifadi? Are you a Qadri? What type of Muslim are you? So the questioner says, I am a Muslim following Quran and Sunnah. What Sunnah? Everyone says Quran and Sunnah. The, khawari, the Khariji says Quran and Sunnah. The Shia says Quran and Sunnah. The Qadri say Quran Sunnah. What type of Quran Sunnah are you? So he says, I follow Quran and Sunnah like the way the Salafis Salihin understood. The Sheikh says, Yes, very good. You have to follow Quran and Sunnah the way the Salafis Salihin understood. So for this big sentence, in short form, the word is Salafi.
and the debate was won according to the son of peace the debate was won and on the internet you go i respect sheikh nasir almani many of my talks when i want to check up a hadith i see him so i respect him mashallah i love him i revere him but no taqlid no taqlid taqlid only belongs to allah and his rasul fine see this is logic this is kiyas see logic i say prove to me from quran and sunna not logic alhamdulillah summa alhamdulillah allah has blessed me with logic summa alhamdulillah i am not a scholar i consider myself a student of talib ilm a student of knowledge but allah has blessed me that i have missed many scholars whether it be of the great indian scholars whether from nadwa whether from deoband whether it be the saudi scholars alhamdulillah whether it be the scholars from other parts of the world allah has blessed me i had the opportunity to interact with the great scholars of the present time so based on that what type of muslim are you are you a kharji are you a mutazali are you a shia are you a qadri are you a sufi based on that even the debate so he said see then sheikh replies no but the question says but didn't allah say call yourself muslim to so the sheikh replied that that time there was only one islam now there are different groups so therefore it is compulsory fard obligatory you should identify yourself as a salafi logic now comes my reply and that debate was ended there sheikh nasir dalbani won the debate see for me don't debate with me Prove to me from Quran and Sunnah immediately, Doctor Zakir Naik will accept. Debating, Alhamdulillah, Summa, Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed me. In debating, Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed me. My response to Sheikh Nasir Al Bani: I respect him. I am nothing compared to him. I am not even a drop in the ocean compared to Sheikh Nasir Al Bani. So please don't get me wrong. Many of my talks are based on his research, Mashallah. So please don't get me wrong. I love him. I respect him. But no taklid. I tell him, fine. If you see the lifestyle in the history of the Prophet, he didn't quote any hadith to me. He didn't quote to me any verse of the Quran that call us a Salafi. So I don't call. No logic. At the time of the Prophet, there were hypocrites, munafiks. Fine. They were munafiks. The Sahabas did not change the name. They were Kharijis, Khawarij. Kharijites. They call themselves Kharaji. People gave them the label. The Sahabas yet called themselves Muslims. Did the Sahabas say give them a new name? No. They continued calling themselves Muslim. They were Mutazalites. People yet continued calling themselves Muslims. So at that time also there were differences. Not that they were not. Now coming to the question. That therefore, Sheikh Nasir Al Bani says you should call you, call yourself Salafi. My question is, which Salafi? Which Salafi? My counter question. And now, do you know how many types of Salafi? Are you a Qutubi, a Sururi, a Madkhali? I can name another Salafi. See, I'm not speaking against anyone. Please don't get me wrong. I don't mean ill to any of them. But even in Salafi, there are various groups. And if you go to UK, Masha Allah, Subhan Allah, Allah Akbar. There are so many groups in UK. Each group fighting against the other, calling the other Salafi a kafir. No, it's Billah. We'll come to that later on if time permits. So, which Salafi do you belong to? Again, see whatever label you give, there's bound to be tafarraka. When the Shias came, people said we are Sunni. Again, there was group Ahle Sunnah wal Jamaat. Then, again, there was division Hanafi, Shafi, Hamli, Malaki. Then we came with Salafi, Ahle Hadith. There's group even in this. The moment the name, the name given by human beings, there's bound to be tafarruku. Even in Allah's name, Muslim, there's bound to be division. Allah told that. But don't think the name you give will not have divisions. Don't you think Allah did not know? Allah knew there are going to be divisions in the Muslim Ummah. He told in the Quran, the Prophet predicted. Yet the Prophet didn't say, "Call yourself Ali Hadith, call yourself Salafi." Ali Hadith. 
which Eliyadit in, in Bombay where I come from, there are two Eliyadit. Jamiyat Eliyadit and Gurba Eliyadit. So which Eliyadit do I belong to now? One Eliyadit blaming the other Eliyadit. See, I don't want to mean any harm to the Eliyadis. Therefore, I said the topic is sensitive. Wallah, I'm only trying to talk about Quran and Allah's Rasul. Please don't feel bad. I respect Nasruddin al Mashaykh, Nasruddin al Mani. I respect the Salafis. I look amongst all these groups that are there, we have to agree the Ahle Hadith and the Salafis are the closest to the Quran and Sunnah. I'm proud to say that. But, but, which Salafi? So maybe during the early times of Sheikh Nasir al Mani, there weren't groups in the Salafi, now there are groups. Sururi, Matkhali, Putubi. Oh, he's not right, he's not right, he's calling him Salafi. But so now we have new books, true Salafi, true Salafi. I read a book called Salafi Dawa, true Salafi, true Salafi. What is this true Salafi? I say, you know, we had a Dawa training program in Bombay, where we invited people from different parts of the world. There are 14 people, there were 19 people from 14 different countries. And many of them were from Madina University, mashallah, from Bahrain University, all more than 50% were Salafi, mashallah. So we had a discussion there. So then I asked the question. Salafi shortcut, short name. Instead of saying, I believe in Quran and Hadith according to the way of Salafi Salih, shortcut Salafi. So I asked him, the Salafi Salihin is better or Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is superior? Who's better? So they told Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So why not call yourself Muhammadi? Right or wrong? In India, who calls themselves Muhammadi? You know? Do you know? Do we agree with them? No. Who calls themselves Muhammad in India? Who is superior? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah. Allah. So one who submits his will to Allah is called a Muslim. We know there are divisions in Muslim, but whatever name you give, there are going to be division. In the Hanafi Masrak, there were four students. In Shafi Masrak, there's Qadim and Jadid. In the Ahle Hadith, I went to Kashmir, there are many groups of Ahle Hadith. I went to Kerala, Mujahideen. Mujahideen. KNM, Kerala Nalvatul Mujahideen. There, people don't call themselves Ahle Hadith. Mujahideen. If you go to Saudi Arabia and say, I'm Ahle Hadith, what is this new Ahle Hadith? Very few people of the Saudis know who is an Ali Hadith. For them, they know Salafi. But Salafi and Ali Hadith belong to the same group, the names are different. In some country, Ansari. Fine. So, when he's saying call ourselves Salafi, that means the Ali Hadith of India, they aren't Salafis. Fine. So, here we realize that if you want to give a label, Instead of Salafi, Muhammad is better. Instead of Muhammad is Muslim. Therefore, I say, Atullah, Atullah. Therefore, I, for label, I prefer calling myself Muslim. That's it. First a Muslim, last a Muslim. I am not hurting any of my Muslim brothers, whether it's a Hanafi or a Shafi or a Hanbali or a Maliki or a Ahli Hadith or a Salafi. Believe me, I love all. I love all my Muslim brothers. I'm not here to hurt anyone's feeling. Therefore, I said, Tala vila kalmitin sawa in bainana bainakum. Come to come in terms as we ask any. I'm coming to come in terms. I respect Abu Hanifa, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Ahmad Hanbal, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi. I respect the great scholars of this. I respect the Salafi Salin. I follow them. Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us. Warns us of something that we do need a warning about today in the world. Today, what happens to the Muslims? Every small thing, we are divided. Small thing, we cannot work together. We are divided. If a person, for example, is tall, he doesn't get along with those who are short. I mean, that's a bit ridiculous, but it can happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really has warned us about dispute amongst you as an ummah. If you are to dispute and argue, what will happen? You lose your power and your might as an ummah. Today we have two billion Muslims on the globe. We cannot agree to swat a fly. I'm honest with you. We have two billion Muslims on the globe. We cannot agree to swat a fly. Why? Because everyone is a big sheikh on his own. 
and everyone wants to have a big say and and the sheikhs are fighting each other each one calling the other a kafir wallahi it's a reality so what is happening our leaders are debating and arguing and fighting and calling each other names the public are even more confused because any message of goodness they are kept away hey don't go here don't go there what is the story what happens allah says Verse number 46 of Surah Al-Anfal. Follow Allah and follow His Rasul and do not dispute with one another because it will result in your total failure and the, and the going away or snatching away of your might as an ummah. Gone. Totally gone. Why? Because small disputes. Today, brothers and sisters don't speak to each other. What a shame. Uncles and aunts don't speak to each other. Trustees from one masjid do not get along with trustees from another masjid. Why? It's an issue of prestige. Allahu. What are you talking about? We are an ummah. We share the shahada. That's enough. Put aside your differences and come together. We need the might as an ummah. We have the numbers. We have everything. But the problem is we are disputing. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in another verse in the Quran. Do you know what he says? The kuffar, they are supporters and protectors of one another. Come what may, they put aside their differences when it comes to sticking up for one another. This is in the Quran. We read the verse tonight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us. This in fact is verse number 73 of the same surah, Surah Al-Anfal. Do you know what Allah says after he tells us that the kuffar stick up for one another and they protect one another? He says, if you are not going to do the same, then there will be great fitna and facade on earth. That means if you are not going to stick up for one another and protect one another, then there will be chaos and corruption on the whole globe. Hence, we find the chaos and corruption on the globe today. It is a decree of Allah. We are totally disunited. We cannot see face to face yet. We are born through one mother and father. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the ummah. May Allah protect us. It is worth crying for my brothers and sisters. We are calling for unity. It is not going to come without tolerating one another. We need to understand not everybody is going to think the same. Not everybody is going to have the same inclinations. But don't we share the shahada? Isn't that stronger than the bond of blood, my brothers and sisters? Gone are the days when the kuffar are excited because they can trample over us by the mere disunity that we are engaged in, my brothers and sisters. We need it. We need it desperately. Our brothers are suffering across the globe, all over. The reason is we are swearing one another. We are calling one another names. We do not want to look at one another. Whereas we all utter the shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. My brothers and sisters, it is a passionate call. We want peace. We are searching for peace. We are the people of peace. Why then are we looked at as warmongers who are killing one another across the globe just because we have a little difference? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this ummah and may He grant us unity. May He open our doors until we meet again. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta.